In PHTLS previous editions, they used to use a term called the golden hour. The golden hour was the concept that patients that are critically injured in trauma have a definitive set of time that they can receive definitive medical care and survive, in which the definitive medical care will be effective at reversing their uh, transition towards death. And so in those cases, it was thought in practice that literally it meant an hour. Well, through research and through expansive evidence-based medicine, we've identified that it's no longer thought of as a golden hour, as in 60 minutes, but instead it is a golden period. It's important to know that it may be one hour within certain circumstances and with certain resources, but not always. It's not something that we can give a rigid time frame for across all situations, but it is a time period for an individual patient in certain circumstances in which definitive care will be most beneficial in reversing their demise. There's three major components uh, of this golden period. One, we need to make sure that we get to patients and make patient contact as soon as possible. And this is gonna involve not just getting to the scene safely, but rapidly, but their access to 911. Remember that when we're talking about these periods, it generally is from the onset of their injury and not from when we arrive on scene. We have to take into account the time delay it was from when they experienced the injury to the time that we arrive on scene as taking away from this golden period. Now, once we get on scene, we have a limited time frame to assess, find, and fix life threats. And finally, we need to make sure that within the framework of our response to these patients, when we arrive on scene, we limit our scene time in critical patients so that we can get them to definitive care, which is often a hospital, in an appropriate time and still meet the needs of the patient. So we have to package the patient, prepare, and transport the patient in a timely manner. So again, it's the time period that justifies us rapidly getting that patient to definitive care. It's not a specific number of minutes in every situation, but it's the time period in which the patient is likely to survive their injury if they can make it to definitive care within that period. So we strive to make sure that we limit scene time in patients that are critical so that we can achieve this. Our assessment is really on scenes limited to just the immediate emergent life threats that we have to address, and it does dictate our care on scene. For example, in trauma, it's very important that we're not starting IVs on patients or doing things that have long processes and procedures and prone to error, like taking a blood pressure on the outside on the side of the road next to an ambulance that's running. These situations, like starting an IV on scene and taking a blood pressure, can inadvertently keep you on scene longer than you attended, especially if it doesn't go as simple and easy as you initially planned. For example, starting an IV requires getting equipment ready, it finding the site, cleaning the site, and you might have had to do many other things before the IV was warranted, like addressing your X, A, B, C, D, and E. So generally, we want to limit to the scene care to only what's required to get them safely off the scene and to stabilize them so they can survive from where they're at to your ambulance and whatever that means in the environment that you're in. Excessive treatment will delay the critical time period here of our golden period and could mean that the patient has very little chance of survival when we get them to definitive care. Now, I'm not going to write these out, take quite a bit of time to do so, but on our screen we've got some <clears throat> conditions that are associated with the golden principles of trauma care. So let's go through these 15 principles as they're found in the PHCLS 9th edition. So these principles are going to guide the use of our preferences in meeting patient principles. Lots of terms there I know, but we're talking about how, how we develop our principles and preferences. These 14 golden principles of trauma care you should use to guide the individual specific treatments that you'll be doing for patients in scenarios and in real life care. I want to wrap up just with a little discussion reminding you that our primary assessment in PHTLS 9th edition has changed quite a bit.
We no longer are saying A, B, C, D, and E is our primary assessment. And in trauma care, you take care of C-spine and you control bleeding beforehand. Instead, we've made it easier. So this new tool is X, A, B, C, D, and E. The A, B, C, D, and E are essentially the same as you've learned them before, airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and expose an environment. But the X is specifically for mitigating exsangu exsanguination. We want to make sure that we ensure all major external bleeding is addressed as soon as possible. And as I've said before, you have the rest of the patient's life to decide when to stop their bleeding. We want to address minimal scene time and make sure that when appropriate, our scene time is less than 10 minutes. Getting off scene within 10 minutes is very difficult, but essential in trauma care. If we're on scene for more than 10 minutes in critical trauma care, we are addressing and taking away from our golden period of time. Getting off the scene in 10 minutes, though, can be a challenge when we're involved in environments in which we can't get really close to the patient. Maybe the patient needs to be removed from a vehicle through extrication or extraction. Perhaps there's things we have to do on scene before it's even safe to proceed. All of these things will limit the time that we have to evacuate the patient. So I strongly recommend that when you're on a scene with a, tr a critical trauma patient, you designate somebody who will be mostly hands off with your patient to be counting the clock and giving you warnings at eight minutes, nine minutes, and finally we need to leave at 10 minutes. This may be even somebody on scene like a law enforcement officer who has limited involvement in patient care. Whatever it is, the person that's doing patient care and involved the most with patient direct interaction is less likely to manage that time effectively. Now, we don't need to necessarily get off scene in all trauma cases within 10 minutes or less, but in certain situa situations we do. It's going to require prioritization of your treatment and your assessment skills on scene to only the things that are warranted for that patient to keep them stable enough to get into the ambulance.